making prayer with joy. Think about that statement. It comes from Philippians chapter 1. Let me share that with you. Philippians 1 verses 2 through 6. Paul says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. When it comes to prayer, is it a burden or it is a joy for you? I've learned over the years that at times we pray because it's our duty. We pray because a situation demands it. We pray because we're desperate. And actually, we pray sometimes because it's a joy to communicate with our Heavenly Father. For some, it's hard to come to prayer with an attitude of joy and excitement. Yet that's exactly what Paul describes here in his prayer in Philippians chapter 1. In verse 4, he says, I'm making my prayer with joy. So, how can we pray with joy? I think there's at least three statements from Paul's, three thoughts from Paul's statement here in Philippians chapter 1. He wrote it to the Philippian church, but it's so appropriate for us today. So the first statement is, the first thing I would say is, um, his thought would be, remember what God has done for you as you pray. Look at verse 3. He says, I thank God in all my remembrance of you. Nothing should bring a smile to our face like remembering the wonderful things that, first of all, God has done for us and thinking about the people that God has brought into our lives. And when you think about what God's done for you and the people that you care about, it brings out a, a heart of joy and thanksgiving, or it should bring out a heart of joy and thanksgiving. Matter of fact, we could stop here and it probably wouldn't hurt us to name something we remember that God has done that brings joy to our heart. Well, think about that. So remembering is the first thing. The second thing is opportunities. Paul says in verse 5, he, he prays about opportunities for ministry and service. That's the second thought. He says in verse 5, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. See, prayer is exciting when you're praying for future opportunities and plans. See, if we truly believe that God answers prayers, then we can come to him with joyful expectations of good things that are yet to come. It, it helps to know that our prayer actually means something towards the plans that we make. Whether you're considering going on a mission trip or getting involved in church, you can start by going to God in anticipation and expectation. Remember, when you step out in, pray, in prayer, excuse me, when you step out in faith, prayer is the first step. And there's a third thought that we find in verse 6. As you pray, making your prayer with joy, you think about God's promises. He said there, which is my life verse, he said, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Even the most dried out, discouraged Christian can help but smile when we think about some of God's promises. Philippians 1.6, like I said, is one of my favorite verses. It's my life verse. Knowing that God is faithful and that he's the one at work in our life should bring us joy. It brings me joy. See, a Christianity that's dependent on our performance is a burden. But on the other hand, when our success depends on God's faithfulness and God's promises, it frees us up to live a life of joy in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So when you pray, don't worry. God has everything under control. God's promises have a way of bringing joy, even in the most discouraging of times. He will carry it through to completion. Bring it to completion, the verse says. So three thoughts from these simple verses by Paul. Remember, our prayer with joy remembers what God has done. It prays about opportunities for ministry and service. And it thinks about God's promises. These are just a few ways to add joy to your prayer life. Prayer shouldn't be a burden. It should bring joy. It should be a blessing to you. Father, thank you for the way that you've given us your word. As Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, he writes to us even today as we read it. We can understand how um, there can be, he can make his prayer with joy, as he said, because he had 
things that he could remember. He had ministry that he knew that would be done. He had your promises that were fulfilled. Your promise to carry it through to completion until the day of Christ. What a wonderful thing. So God, guide us in our prayer life. Help us to come to you, to be faithful in that, and to make our prayers with joy. For there is a good reason to do that. And it's Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.